Thank you. So, uh, hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending our session after a long day of very interesting sessions. Um, so this one, uh, in this one, we talk about boosting your UFI applications with the uh, server-side rendering. And uh, I'll jump right into introducing ourselves. So I am Webhav, and I'm uh, uh, an engineer working at Klarna uh, in Stockholm. Uh, I I was a part of SAP family uh, two years ago, and uh, it's the love for Open UFI that keeps bringing me back to UFI Con. Um, yeah, that's about me. So uh, my name is Nitish uh, Mehta. I am founder CEO of a company called Cloud Integrator, uh, working towards simplifying enterprise integrations. Uh, primarily working with a lot of SAP customers and. Uh, not just on integrations, but custom developments and theory projects. I've been part of SAP for around five years before I decided to move out, and it's been three years since then. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so uh, to begin with, uh, an introduction to server-side rendering. Um, I, I, I like to explain things in non-technical way, uh, and since we had such a fabulous lunch today, uh, I decided to bring some pizza in the picture. So I heard about this place called John's Pizza Place. Uh, I went there, and I really like pizza. I was really hungry after a long day at work. So I ordered my favorite pizza, and Mr. John comes up to my table. And it's, it's been just one minute since I ordered, and I'm highly impressed. Wow, it's, it's, it's such a fast service. I just ordered, and I, I think I'm going to get the pizza that I ordered. But wait a minute, there is something strange because Mr. John comes up with an empty plate and not only that in his empty plate there are I, I started I start seeing ingredients of pizza uh, and I and I start to wonder am I supposed to make the pizza here or am I am I, I I'm here to eat it right but then something something strange happens I, I was already hungry now I'm also angry so I'm hangry but suddenly Mr. John starts to prepare the pizza on my table yeah, it's delicious. I love the pizza. I love the experience after it's prepared. But that part where I was expecting to have a prepared pizza on my table, but instead I got ingredients and I saw it happening, that wasn't so pleasant. And then I told, uh, so, so this, is, this is an analogy that I use to explain how client-side rendering works. Uh, the users come to our uh, application for data or content, and uh, they are initially presented an empty plate. Now, that's a beautiful plate. Uh, but uh, the plate starts fetching ingredients from the server uh, in forms of JavaScript, CSS, even data. Uh, and then we start seeing the application build up in front of our eyes. It's, it's not bad. It's a good experience. But it would have been perfect if it was like a prepared application like in, in the very first render and also fast. So I told Mr. John about this technology called server-side rendering, and all the experience changes. So I order my favorite pizza again. Mr. John comes to my table, and I'm this, today I'm expecting an empty plate. But to my surprise, he has the pizza. And I eat the pizza, and I'm happy. So that's, that's the change we're trying to bring in. Uh, so in very in very uh, simple terms, uh, that's that's the benefit of server side rendering that you get a baked a prepared dish on your table instead of instead of seeing how how it's how it's getting how it's coming up. So uh, yeah. let's. I think we will describe the whole thing with a very nice analogy. Uh, in terms of uh, now talking purely in terms of a technical aspect. Uh, in terms of client-side rendering, we load the application resources, be it CSS, uh, JavaScript, everything once uh, the browser gets the first information about your index HTML. And then the trigger for every uh, ingredient or every library is triggered. In terms of server-side rendering, you get a finished HTML that contains style tags and exact thing so that no further library reload or anything has to happen. Now, this scenario uh, works in certain cases, and it won't work in certain cases. So when to prefer uh, server-side rendering is a very important thing before we really jump into it. One of the biggest advantage of server-side rendering is SEO management and SEO optimization. So if you've seen, let's say, Amazon, uh, if you search any of uh, the products of Amazon on Google, Google gives us all the details about it indexed very nicely. 
That is only possible because Amazon provides us uh, finished HTML that Google or other web crawlers can really crawl and understand and index, which is not possible if you have a single page application like uh, currently with UI5. Uh, it's also important when your application really is serving static uh, pages, unlike uh, the scenarios where you have a lot of transactional application. So if I open the application, it, if I see completely different data, let's say leave request, and he will be seeing completely different uh, information about leave request or other tools, then uh, server-side rendering won't be the best approach. So understanding when to use it and when not to use it is equally important before we jump into implementation. Also scenarios where the perceived load time is not such a big issue, where if we talk about the free launch pad, once it loads, we're not really uh, concerned about, uh, okay, if it takes one second instead of uh, two seconds, obviously it helps us, but it's not too big of a pain. But if you go to Amazon and you say, okay, it's going to take you five seconds before you see the first website and you can interact with it, then it's a big issue. So if the perceived load time and interaction time are not uh, much of an issue, then you can stick to client side rendering also. Okay, uh, how to render server side? Uh, I think during the day we've seen multiple sessions about the evolution of UFI with UFI web components and other things. Uh, libraries like React.js already support uh, server side rendering. So if you're using web components combined with that, you can easily also serve your UFI web component resources with a server side implementation. However, we'll be focusing on the scenario of uh, the older UI5 uh, in a way and see how we can simulate a similar experience using the current open UI5 uh, versions. Yes. And for this, uh, we'll be using an NPM package, Puppeteer. A quick introduction on Puppeteer it's uh, an NPM uh, library that lets you run Chromium on uh, as a script. So it's like a headless Chrome browser that you can run and render everything possibly on that uh, particular browser and then serve it to your client. So uh, a simple uh, scenario. This is if you're loading an application and if you open the UFF app on the home screen, uh, we make the first request, we get the barebone HTML that will have our bootstrap and CSS and IET and information and then resource load request go for all of them. So I think we've all experienced uh, the network request and the time it will take to really come in. So once everything is loaded, then we start seeing our application and are able to interact with it, which might take a different time depending on how big uh, the different files are. And uh, I would like to mention that there are excellent ways to optimize this, uh, staying a client-side application and bundling everything in the correct way or creating the specialized bundles. Uh, so it's 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 not the only problem that we're it's it's not it's not per se a problem that we're we're trying to solve. We are just trying to create another way of serving actual rendered uh, HTML. Yeah. So uh, yes, you can. So in this scenario, if we talk of a server-side implementation, what would happen is a request goes to uh, your server to give me the HTML page. And on the node application, we run an instance of the browser where all these resources are loaded and that cached or that indexed HTML that contains your CSS and every other detail is then served to the mobile application. Now the perceived time in the very first load will be higher because you are still doing the same implementation of loading all your resources. But the benefit of such an implementation is that if there are 1,000 people using, hitting the same index or the same page, the first time it is loaded, it is cached. Every future request doesn't need to perform the second part of the implementation. And you can just serve the cached version. So the perceived time of uh, your application will be exponentially or considerably faster. Right. So uh, that was the concept that we were trying to that we are trying to visualize here. So without uh, much ado, I will uh, jump into the code and let's see how it how it's uh, uh, wired together. So 
I, I downloaded this uh, shopping cart demo uh, of UI5 and uh, I have made a Node Express application to just serve the static uh, UI5 application uh, directly. So if I, if I run this uh, Node application, I will be able to see the, oops, it's wrong port. So we can see that this is uh, our uh, demo app of uh, shopping cart, and it's rendered client side. If I go into view page source, I can see that this is, uh, if you ignore a few parts, this is exactly how the shopping cart demo app looks like, a, a client side uh, single page application. Now, uh, we, we wanted to uh, like make it as easy as possible for the new applications to be, or, or for the existing applications to be, experimented with the server-side rendering. So uh, what, what, what we're doing is we're making a, an NPM package uh, that will abstract away a lot of complexity uh, into converting or, or, or rather into rendering everything on the server and responding back with the data. So what we have here is uh, a package that I've already installed in, in the interest of time called uh, UI5 Servify, uh, which I uh, we just have it uh, locally right now. We haven't published it. So we've added that to this project. Uh, to use it, uh, what we're doing is we uh, open our node application again uh, and import the package. So I have it here. In the current configuration of uh, converting your application to a server-side application, uh, we, have, uh, we, we need to pass in the original source of your index.html. Because what, what, what this approach is doing is it's opening your application on the server, pa parsing the HTML, and then returning that HTML along with the original source so that the client side uh, application can also function the way it does. It's just that the server side HTML will appear first. You would see that. You would be able to see the content and, and consume it. And after a while, uh, like th this, the same time that the client side application takes, it, it takes that time and it, it, it'll start rendering the way client side. side application renders. So what we have here is uh, uh, an uh, express middleware uh, to which you can feed in your original source of index HTML and a few properties like uh, to use the cache. Uh, it's a property because in development it's helpful to turn off the cache, otherwise you end up with unexpected issues that you can't uh, figure out. Uh, there's a property called rehydrate, uh, which, which means that uh, once the, the page is rendered, it will get rehydrated with the way client side uh, code behaves so that all your navigation and all your routing works on the client side so that it's not a reload when you click on a link. Otherwise, server side applications uh, in, in theory uh, are always like re-rendered when you, when you navigate around. So the whole implementation could actually have been done without the library. Library is just an additional layer to simplify the use of Puppeteer and other things underneath. It's a very small library. We just created it to simplify extra stuff. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm going to restart my Node app. And you would see that I, I use this uh, middleware at, at a path called slash server. So if I, if I still open localhost without any, uh, any other route, it still gives me my client side application. But if I now go to my localhost port uh, slash server, uh, on the first render, what's happening beneath the hood is it's it's booting up a Chrome instance uh, in my Node environment and trying to render all this HTML on the server. And what we get, if I now go into view, view page source, what we get is the entire HTML source that this UI5 application generates on the client. Otherwise, uh, in a separate in a separate div right now. And uh, oops. And when I, when I go back to the application, I can see that I can still interact with the, my controls the way I do, because rehydration has happened. So the client side code has, has come into picture, and it has made all the bindings work. It's just the initial, initial snapshot of the page, like, like the initial HTML of the page, you were able to see it much before client side came into the picture. So uh, that's that's the that's the index page. But if I if I if I let's say if I navigate to one of these pages, which is uh, not the default route today, because UI5 uses hash in the navigation, uh, and hash cannot be transferred over to a network request, we we have to replace uh, like move 
to replace hash with the path that we had uh, configured, that that is server. And if we directly go to that page, even that page would be rendered server side. So, so you can actually create a sitemap for your entire application so that the, the search engines can actually crawl through the content of your like pages deep down in the entire navigation uh, path. Uh, yeah. So this is just uh, an additional thing we did on top of uh, the existing library to allow the hash navigation that UFF supports with server side rendering. And uh, to to actually check uh, the difference between uh, what what has changed, uh, we can run the performance tool of Chrome Dev, uh, and this is the client uh, route, client side render route. If I profile it, we are looking at a metric uh, at a metric called uh, largest contentful paint. So that is when uh, Chrome Dev Tools knows that uh, your entire like the largest content on your page has rendered and it is not rendering anything else. In the client side rendering right now, uh, it comes out to be uh, around 2.7 seconds. But uh, if we do the same thing on uh, my server side rendered page, and uh, if we run the profiler again, you can actually see that there is a there is a layer of data coming in much before the the loaders happen or other things happen. So I can I can browse through this uh, screenshot pane and see that my first content actually came in much before the one second was completed. And the largest contentful paint, according to Profiler, is 1.06 seconds. So the perceived loading time of my application has increased, uh, has uh, become better, decreased. And uh, that's that, that, that was the motive of uh, creating a perception that, hey, here is the content. You can read it. You can't interact with it yet, but you can still see that, that there is content and you can read it. Right. What really happened is uh, Weber mentioned the rehydrate uh, functionality. So if you look at the initial uh, time of when the application is loaded, we have the first content paint and uh, the first meaningful paint really early. And then uh, the rehydration kicks in, which would look slightly different from the timeline on a client-side rendered page. So uh, with this, we can uh, we can have we can generate a sitemap XML file which uh, looks like this, and this helps in uh, SEO. So when a when, when a when a crawler a search engine crawler comes in, it can read uh, the links and go to those links. So if I go to this link uh, directly, it will show me the content of that page and and not my root view or not my home view. So the search engines can actually see the title of the products and various attributes and get your data better than than a client side application. So this might not be uh, completely relevant if you're building a Fury application or other things, but if for some reason you decide to use uh, something like a shopping cart, which is an example on the OpenUFF demo kit uh, also, you can use server side rendering to create an indexed uh, application. So web crawlers, when they come to your website, they will have exact information of what kind of products you have and other indexing you have. Yeah. Can I ask a question about uh, rehydrating, how exactly it works? Yeah, uh, so to, to, to finish it, it's not uh, battle tested yet. So the rehydrating works, uh, so uh, as, as I said initially, uh, to configure the server-side uh, rendering, we pass in the entire content of our index.html. And uh, we had to make some tweaks to index.html uh, to actually uh, like have a div that we display uh, from the server-side server content. And then the way uh, UI5 loads the libraries and the CSS, that happens in the background. So what you're presented with is a, is a separate layer on your page with the constructed HTML. The HTML preview, and then you yes. The real UI file yes. The yes. Right. The yes. 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 If you don't uh, invalidate your uh, caches, you can end up with uh, older information. Who so, has to do that? So it, it depends on implementation. Right now, it's a simple uh, object map uh, used as a cache. 
but if it's uh, i mean if you if you're deploying as a it as a redis or some then it, it's it's entirely up to the developers to decide on invalidating the caches but yeah that's that's one of the tricky things in when when you when you actually cache mm -hmm. data and keep it keep, keep a copy of it to be faster Yes. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. um, did you publish this uh, plugin already to NPM? Or? We we are going to do that, and that's why uh, it's it, that that's why I said uh, we we need. Uh, it, it was just an idea that came came as a part of exploring uh, server side rendering, but uh, it's uh, the the main goal is to have the community uh, give inputs and. Uh, make it if if it's uh, worth we, we we can make it better so we, we it is in the plan to publish it as an so npm module and open source it, it more like a beta or an alpha thing but uh, on a real use case frankly we've not really seen a scenario where we would like to build maybe an amazon with ur5 so yeah <laughs> that's why it's not production when we test it Thank you so much. <laughs>